Well, what's going on, everyone? Today, we have a little cupellation uh, compilation. We're going to be doing some cupelling with collector metal and without. And the question is, is can we cupel without collector metal? Um, I've done many cupelling and refinings over the years and uh, done with and without lead. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to kind of see what the results come out with and without. Uh, we've got some constitutional silver and some cement silver, and uh, we'll be using some lead in this video uh, to just kind of see what the results are and what it looks like. Uh, there's definitely advantages to using lead uh, as a collector metal, but you don't always have to, and you can still melt precious metals uh, in an oven uh, without lead and get some of the base metals out with just using a cupel and nothing else. Um, so we'll kind of see how that goes, and we'll see what the results are. We're taking a look at that cement silver that I had mentioned. You can kind of see a little bit of blue hue to it. And this is silver that's been re collected and dropped out from our silver cell refining. And we use copper to drop the silver out of the silver nitrate solution. So that's what we're looking at here. And we are going to keep hell 10 grams of this with a collector metal and 10 grams without and see what happens. Here's the second jar's weight, it's within range, 10.0 grams. This one was 10.06. So we'll have them marked accordingly. So we get a really good analysis of our final result. This here's the cupel size we will use for reference. Plenty big enough. So we're gonna make a little envelope of pure sheet lead, encapsulate some of that 10 grams of that silver and we'll get the electric furnace going and we'll see that next. There's our 99.9% .9 lab grade lead sheet, real thin. I'm gonna make a little envelope packet out of this. I'll put, I'll put this one in, the 10.03, fold it up and that'll be our collector metal sample. This one we're just gonna dump straight in, no collector metal. And then I also wanted to put uh, some constitutional silver in here because uh, that does contain copper and silver and we'll see if that copper can act as a collector metal and we'll also see what it looks like afterwards using a mixed metal sample without an actual collector metal and how that refines down in the cupel. I've done cupelling with jewelry before and all kinds of different stuff and as long as the metals in there are correct uh, we should still see reduction in oxidization of the base metals, leaving behind mostly precious metals, which of course would need further refinement to get to pure. That's what we're looking at. Let's get after it. There's the lead, 29 and a half grams. No specific reason, just cut a sheet. <laughs> All right, let's make this packet. A little tiny bit of dust in there, but that's not gonna weigh nothing. Give it a little fold, keep all that stuff together. Crush it up. There we go. Collector metal, no collector metal. Let me go grab some constitutional silver. Sorry for any anyone who uh, gets offended by that. This is all for science. All right, so I'm gonna use this 1857 dime as a, no, I'm just kidding. Did some quick calculating. We should see 11.2 grams of pure silver if it's able to fully oxidize the copper out using this cupel and no collector metal. We've got the first two. These are the silver, cement silver, with uh, one with collector metal, one without. The constitutional silver, I'll have to do a separate run. So I'm gonna get this heating up. The goal is to see if there's any really measurable difference using a collector metal versus none, and using the cupel to help reduce any of the impurities, because there are impurities in this cement silver, like copper. 
that should easily absorb into the capel without a collector metal. So what we'll do is compare the weights once these have fully cooled off and done their thing and see if there's any real measurable difference using a collector metal versus not for this material specifically. We'll check on this in about 30 minutes. Got the tabletop furnace warming up. It's about 550 degrees. And we'll let it cook. It looks like we, it's about 25 minutes in and it doesn't look like we've hit our desired temp. I don't know if my uh, oven's old and tired or if it's just a little bit weak with all that material in there, but we're gonna pop it open, take a look and see what we can see on this initial little half hour here, sort of. Hopefully we see a pool of metal. Well, we're starting to, it's not quite hot enough. So we'll let it keep doing its thing. And catch up with it in a little bit. We should be up to a good temperature, 2100 degrees. We should see both cupels with liquid metal in them. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Sort of oxides up on the top of that. The collector metal looks really good. Looks like it's about done. We'll let it go for a little bit longer. Pull them both out, set up the coin, and see what we got. I'm going to pull the, get my mask on here, I'm going to pull the one with the collector metal out and get the coin in. We'll see how the non-collector metal is looking. That way we can take advantage of the time we've got with this stove on. Try to do this without spilling anything. Good luck. Here's just a small oxide layer on that. Oh man, I shorted out the oven. That's not good. That's fried. Uh-oh. I think that circuit is fried. There's the two buttons. Yeah, the... One of the coils stuck to this thing. And I was pulling it and it, it hit the other wire. And it arced, and it cut the other wire. Let me see if I can show you guys that. Ooh, this is hot. It arced it out and welded it off. I think I've got to replace those here. I'm going to see if this can get back up to temperature. Pretty sure it's fried. These are looking good, though. That looks way better than this one, but we'll see what it weighs. There's an oxide layer on top of that. You can see it right there. All right. Yep. She's toast. I'm going to have to get replacement coils. You can, you can repair these things. I'm going to get replacement coils and have to fix that. But for all intents and purposes, we have our two collector metal and non-collector metal silver samples obviously this one's a lot uglier we got a oxide layer on top I'll let those cool down and we'll gather all the little beads too if you can see there's little beads there and all around there 
And we'll get a weight on them. <laughs> yes, what a mess. Um, I've got kind of a workaround. I'm really bummed I shorted this thing out. But I'm working on kind of a workaround for this thing. I did order the parts from, I think it was PMC Supplies. But I got this thing taken apart and I just confirmed that I can get it to run. So what I'm gonna do is try to get these taken out, put the wires back in, reconnect it all, set it all back up, put it together and try to finish this video. <laughs> we'll see. I would say it's almost back to what it was, but it is insulated enough to fire it up. I did test it before I put it back together, and we should be good to go. Now let's look at what we've got. Here are the two samples that we got out. Clearly the one on the right is the one we used the lead on. The left is no collector metal. Get this in a scale. Nine point three. That's the part that was on the bottom of the cupel, and there's still a little bit of some junk in there. But overall, you know, this is probably ninety-eight, ninety-nine percent pure silver at least. I'd say ninety-eight. That's quite a bit of loss. Usually, there's not that much copper contamination in cement silver. Nonetheless. That's a really nice button using collector metal. Of course, we would expect that. Now let's see what we got with no clerk collector metal. There's a little bit of cupel in there because there was some silver stuck to it. Whatever. 8.89 so there's less silver here than the one with the collector metal which doesn't make too much sense but it is what it is and it's definitely you know definitely not as nice there's still a little bit of oxides on top but the silver did melt there were base metals that were absorbed into the cupel um you know being that copper pretty much is the only contaminant in my uh, cement silver. This is the silver crystal that I make in the silver cell and the leftover silver nitrate from these refinings is used to create an electrolyte for the silver cell. That electrolyte needs to be recovered or the silver in it needs to be recovered and that's what the cement silver is. Now there's a chance that you know some of the scoop that I got for each jar was a little bit different. You know, there's different shades of blue in here. The bluer, the more copper, but overall, I'm still surprised the one with lead had, you know, 0.7 or so grams of copper in 10 grams. That's like 7%, which is far more than I would anticipate. That's why we're doing this experiment. Kind of fun so far. Lastly, we're gonna cupel this 90% silver half dollar. And I'm guessing we're gonna see a similar result to the one without collector metal. A button with some oxides on top, clean bottom, just stuck to the cupel, didn't roll up in a nice bead. But we're gonna find out, never done any of these uh, experiments. So let's see what happens. There's a look at the cupel. Temperature is rising. Let it cook. Nice to see this thing actually able to get back up to temperature. Let's just take a peek. Let's see if anything's melting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that looks real good. I don't know if the camera caught that. But uh, yeah, that looks perfect. So we'll keep it going on. I'm gonna say another 20 minutes. And then I'll come and look at it for the final final observation. I don't know if it's... Let me check and see if the camera caught it. I think the camera quite saw what I was seeing, so real quick. There we go. So 
saw an oxide layer on top, I saw silver below, just like the one without collector metal. And hopefully that all melts into a puddle so the oxides could flow into the cupel. Alrighty, I think I can call this safely. Let's see. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of oxides on top. I don't think you guys can make that up. Let's see. Little oxides on top. I'm gonna call that. That looks good to me. I'll pull it out of there, let it cool down. Shabby, not shabby at all. That is pretty good. There's a little bit of oxide you can see floating on top right around there. That's okay. Nice little puddle of silver. Be interesting to see the difference in weight once that cools off. There's a look at the silver. Benjamin. 3.6 on, what was it? 13.1 or something like that. Now we do have some silver mixed in here with the oxides on the compel. That's kind of consistent with what we saw on the no collector metal. There's still silver in there. That's the oxide layer into the cupel. Kind of looks like it got drawn in a little bit. Get a good focus here. I'm not gonna worry about a few grams of silver on this little experiment here. Pretty cool, fun little experiment. And that kind of leads us to our conclusion here. Let's let's get into the conclusion. Here. Oh, 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 oh man.